Okay, welcome to section 4.3, part 3. Uh, this third and final part is a continuation talking about the relationship between F, F prime, and F double prime. And like I've said several times, what's in this box here is really a summary of everything we've talked about in this uh, section. The first sentence is what leads to the first derivative test, which uh, allows us to find the local max and minima function. The derivative is greater than zero precisely when the function is increasing. Second line relates f double prime with f prime with f, and that's what allows us to come up with what's called the concavity test, which is a method for um, finding the uh, inflection points in where f is concave up and down. And if you've done the homework, you really realize the, the test for concavity is really the same test that we use for the first derivative test. It's just that instead of using f, we're using f prime. Anyway, let's look at a few more um, problems here. Suppose I give you a graph. Of a, now this is a graph of f prime. If I were to put this on a quiz or test, it's crucial that you look at the graph and rec recognize which function this is. This is f prime now. Where is f increasing and decreasing? Well, isn't that where f is? F prime is uh, greater than zero and less than zero. So it's precisely increasing from f is increasing when f prime is greater than zero. So from two to four, and from six to nine. F is decreasing precisely when f prime is less than zero. So from um, uh, zero to two and from four to six. Where do the local extrema of f occur? Well, let's see. The derivative, what does that tell us about the local extrema of f? Well, doesn't the derivative go from positive to negative or from negative to positive? That sounds like an x-intercept to me. So the x-intercepts of, of f prime, you better be careful, it, it not only has to be an x-intercept, but it actually has to cross. So, so this is not only a local extrema, you can tell me what this is. f prime is negative, f prime is positive, that's a local min. Local min at, at 2. There's also a local min at 6. Now here, f prime is positive, f prime is negative, that sounds like a lo local max, so there's a local max at 4. Where, find where f is concave up and down. Let's see here. Um, concave up and down. What does f prime tell me about concavity? Okay. f is concave up precisely when f prime is, is increasing. So we have to determine when f is in, increasing. Where f prime is increasing, I should say. So f is concave up wherever f prime is increasing. Well, f, f prime is increasing from 1 to 3, from 5 to 7, and from 8 to 9. So therefore, since f is prime is increasing there, f is concave up there. Where is f concave down? Wherever f prime is decreasing. So that would be from 0 to 1, from uh, 3 to 5, and from 7 to 8. Where do the inflection points of f occur? Okay, well remember the inflection points of f occur wherever the concavity changes. So, uh, so that's where f prime has to go from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So look where f prime goes from increasing to decreasing. Well, that sounds like here, doesn't f prime decreasing, f prime in, increasing? This is a local minimum of f prime. Uh, it turns out since f prime goes from decreasing to increasing, you have a, an inflection point of f. f goes from concave down to concave up. Similarly, you have an, an inflection point here uh, at 3 because f, f prime goes from increasing, so f is concave up, to f prime decreasing, so f is concave down. And you also have uh, an inflection point of 5, you have an inflection point of 7, you also have an inflection point of 8, so you have lots of inflection points there. So did, did you follow what, what I just said? This turns out to be really important. The inflection points of f are precisely occur, they precisely occur at the same points at, at which the local extrema of f prime occur. That's really important. All right, let's do some more here. Uh, same idea, only this time, instead of giving you the graph of f prime, I'm going to give you the graph of f. Uh, maybe it'd be good to circle that on the quiz. Maybe it'd be good to write this on the top of your quiz, too. Here we go, ready? Where, find where f double prime is greater than zero. What does the graph of f help? How does, how does the graph of f help you answer that question? Well, that's easy. f prime is greater than zero wherever f is concave up. So look at where f is concave up. That would be from 0 to 2, from 4 to 6, and from 7, I'm going to say about 7.5 to 9. Where is f prime decreasing? Remember, f prime is decreasing whenever f is concave down. So that would be from 2 to 4, 
and from about 6 to 7.5. Where are the local extrema of f prime? I think we just talked about that. The local extrema of f prime are the inflection points of f. So you're, having, you're going to have inflection points at 2, 4, 6, and 7.5. And now, let's do this, this last thing here. I'm going to give you the um, graph of f double prime now. Okay? Find where f is concave up and down. How does f double prime help you there? Well, that's easy because your f is concave up whenever f double prime is greater than zero. So f is concave up from 2 to 4 and from 6 to 9. f is concave down whenever f double prime is less than zero. That would be from 0 to 2 and 4 to 6. Where do the inflection points of f occur? Let's see, the inflection points of f is where the concavity changes. That means f double prime has to change from positive to negative or negative to positive. So those are the x-intercepts, aren't they? You got one at 2, 4, and 6. Where do the local extrema of f prime occur? Again, there's that qu question again. The local extrema of f prime occur precisely at the inflection points of f. So the, and, the, and the inflection points of f, we, we just answered that question, 2, 4, and 6. So it was a tricky question. Okay, this last thing I want to talk about is called the second derivative test. And it provides an alternative method for finding local max and min. What it says is, assuming f double prime is continuous near c, if you have a critical number, in other words, f prime of c equals zero, and then you plug that value of c into f double prime, if you get a positive number, you can conclude you have a local min at x equals c. If you um, take that critical number, plug it into f double prime, you get a negative number, you can, you can conclude you have a, a local max. It's pretty easy. Uh, the problem, that, uh, there's two problems with this method, the reason why I don't like it. First of all, it's inconclusive if the second derivative gives you zero. If f double prime of c equals zero, you don't know. What, if it, it could be local min, local max, or neither. Second problem, and this is worse actually, computing f double prime if f is a rational function could be kind of hard and messy, so some, sometimes it's hard. But anyway, th this is why it works. Uh, if you um, look at this picture here, if you have a critical number, that means, this, in this case, the derivative horizontal tangent, right? You plug it into f double prime. If it's a positive number, that means you have a horizontal tangent in a region that's where you're concave up. Remember, f double prime greater than zero means you're concave up. If you put the, those two things together, it must be a local min. Same idea here. If you have a horizontal tangent and you plug that c into f double prime and it's negative, that means it's a, it occurs in a region where you're concave down. You put those two things together and you have a local max. So there it is. Okay, I was saying in some cases the test can be inconclusive. Let's look at these two examples. f of x equals x to the fourth. We know there's a local min at x equals zero, right? The derivative is 4x cubed, set it equal to zero, so your critical number is x equals zero. Take f double prime, you get 12x squared. Plug zero into f double prime, you get zero. So the test is inconclusive, even though you know you know uh, very well that you have a local min there. Whereas, take a look at, at this other example. Look at um, look at um, f of x equals x cubed. Okay. Um, same idea. You know that the derivative is going to be oops, the derivative is going to be three x squared. Set the derivative equal to zero. You get x equals zero. Second derivative is six uh, x. Plug in zero into six x and you get zero. So again, the test is inconclusive. Even though there you know at x cubed you don't have a local max or min. So some, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, let's look at this example. If you, if you uh, have a polynomial function, it works really, really well. Uh, so let's see. Um, how, how would you use the second der derivative test? You'd take the first derivative, set it equal to zero. In this case, you'd want to factor it, I guess. And you get two crit critical numbers. Uh, you get uh, x equal one half and x equal negative one. So then you find f double prime of x and you just pl plug those in. When you plug one half in, you get uh, 24 times one half plus six, I get um, 18, which is positive. Since it's positive, you have a local min there. And uh, if you plug negative one in, you get negative 18. Since it's less than zero, you have a local max there. So when it works, and as long as it's not too messy, it works pretty well, but you, you can use it whenever you want. I don't care. See you later.